I was just going to talk about collagen for a minute. So I'm kind of on the fence about whether collagen creates a histamine problem or not. I have some people that are really, really sensitive and they feel that collagen affects them, you know, in regards to histamine intolerance. So I would say if you're somebody like that, you're not sure whether you could just do collagen where you're going to get glycine, maybe you just do like I'm experimenting with just a glycine in isolation. So that's just my one comment on it. Cause I love the collagen. I wish everybody could do it, but I have had a few people who say, you know what? I think this is creating a histamine problem. When you look up like collagen, you know, histamine, it, it, it's, it's not clear. I don't think it's black or white. I think it just depends on, on certain people's sensitivities. Have you had any experience with people saying anything about it? Yeah. So number one, it depends. So like when I formulate my collagen, we use um, proteolytic enzymes in it as well. And we try to, use, you know, pasture fed, grass fed, organic, like super high quality. So that helps a lot of manufacturers. They'll do sulfuric acid with the collagen. So they'll, they'll add the acid to break it down into its constituent amino acid forms. We use proteolytic enzymes. I like that. Choosing high quality makes a difference. There still could be some histamine sensitivity, right? Most of my patients do great with it. Now, most patients coming in to us have already done things like bone broth and most already know if that's an issue. So I always tell patients, try bone broth. Does, does that help you? Do you react? Now, if you react to bone broth, what's the next solution? Well, I tell patients, if you react to bone broth, try making your homemade bone broth with an Instapot. Uh, that way you can do it in one to two hours versus like a 10 to 12 to 16 hour kind of deal because the longer you cook something, the more histamine accumulates. So the first thing is try regular bone broth. Is that a problem? Okay, if it is, now try doing an Instapot where you cook it shorter and see if that fixes some of the problems. Those are two things out of the gates. And then it's always worth trying collagen because I'd say 90% of people have no problems, but in that they do have a problem, you know, you can always try the bone broth in an Instapot. And then like you mentioned, we can even go just to isolated amino acids down the road if we need. Cool. Cool. Yeah. That's great advice. And really fixing the root cause stuff too, right? So if you couldn't tolerate it, then you got to figure out well, what's going on with your gut, what's going on with your DAO production. Is there some type of a toxin issue affecting your kidneys? Is it an intestinal problem? Is it a leaky gut? Is it an infection issue? So yeah, in theory, you're right. I think the majority of people should tolerate it just fine. I just happened to do some samples. I like to do some samples of some of these companies and they sent me a glycine by itself and I thought, well, let me try it out. So I've been, I've been doing three grams of it before bed. And I'll tell you, I do, it's definitely a more sound sleep. So I can confirm what the research says on it. And then also, you know, something that's, that's pretty interesting is that glycine is there's some type of mechanism with nitric oxide. And so there's a lot of these different like observational studies of people with chest pain. And they were finding that people that had higher levels of glycine, they had a lower risk of heart disease and heart attacks. And so they're thinking that the cholesterol is better regulated with higher glycine, that uh, nitric oxide production is probably increased. So that's going to lower your blood pressure. They're talking about lower blood pressure being associated with glycine. So I think it's because you mentioned it's a vasodilator. So that would make sense. Yep. So sleep's a big one.